Well, hello everyone and welcome to the Aegis Hour. I'm your host, Joel Aegis, and today I am joined by the um, by the knowledgeable and uh, I'd say cultural Marxist expert, uh, Andrew Kremen. Joel, it's good to be with you. Thank you for having me on. No worries. Um, so, Andrew, um, just for people who don't know who you are, I guess, um, we'll start with just like, if you want to just give a rundown of um, and introduce yourself. Right. Well, I'm a, uh, I'm a master student at Notre Dame in Sydney. Um, my undergrad was in creative arts, majoring in creative writing, minoring in theatre. I did that down in Wollongong. Um, I, yeah, I, I, I guess, you know, no, I, I've, got, I've got various, um, I, I'm, very, I'm very interested in reforming in reforming story storytelling, um, I think um, you know. I'm sure we'll go into this um, during the interview. But you know, Plato write, uh, writes, uh, "He who writes the stories controls the future." Um, yeah, I've noticed that. You know, Holly, what Hollywood has been writing, especially from 1968 onwards, has become our modern world, um, and it's left us susceptible to all kind all, all kinds of worries and troubles and errors. And we're sort of you know, you know the harvest is sort of now. Um, you know, we're in many ways, we're in a lot of trouble, and so I'm looking to reform that in many ways. Indeed. Uh, so I guess we'll start with just sort of to define cultural Marxism and um, get into the topic a bit more. So what is cultural Marxism and uh, how did it come about? So cultural Marxism is a way of undermining our societal structures, our language, our culture, and our history. The idea of it is that you seize the means of creating culture. Um, you know, culture itself gets it gets produced um, by it gets produced by you know, by our history. It gets produced by the things that we talk about, the way that we define certain words, certain objects. You know, you know, for example, you know, man, you would argue, has a limit in biology. Um, woman has a has a limit within biology. Well, if you change those limits, um, you know that you know its foundation is no longer in the essence in, in one's biological essence, but in what one thinks. Um, you know, from there you can absolutely undermine everything. Um, philosophically, um, it so so you've heard you've heard perhaps uh, Rene Descartes' um, line, um, "I think, therefore I am." Um, yeah. The idea behind that is, you know, how can one be sure that one exists? You know, your you know, your yeah. senses may deceive you in various ways. You know, the eyes can deceive. You know, you know the sense of touch and smell can all can all be deceived. Um, but the way that you think, even though know, you'd think, you know, well, you know, even that can be deceived, but you no, know, that's the surest way of knowing who you are. Um, from there, you could then, um, illogically, I would not say that that day card would agree with, with the, you know, potential evolutions from that. Of you course. could argue that, well, who I think I am is how I am defined. Um, right. So when it comes to cultural Marxism, it's, it's anti-essentialist in nature. So essentialism, as, as Aristotle defined it, you know, you can tell what something is A by what it is and B by what it is not. You know, I know, you know, I know that a dog is a dog because it's got, it's got four legs. It's got, it's got various, uh, you know, it have, it have various biological features that scientists know, know significantly more about. But I also know that it's a dog because it's not a cat and it's not a horse. Yes. Um, and if you, you know, if you cancel out all the things that it's not, you can come to what it might be. Um, Cultural Marxism is anti-essentialist. So nothing has any essence. Rather, um, rather uh, everything is socially constructed. You know, that's what meaning is. So it's got five, it's got five main, um, it's got five main recurring themes, as they're called, um, that, that seem to permeate, you know, the various idea, you know, the, ver the various um, causes that, um, that they're concerned about. Um, so firstly, politics is pervasive. Absolutely everything is viewed through a political lens. Um, I'm sure you've heard of, um, uh, you know, mansplaining or manscaping. Um, yeah. You know, that's, you know, you know, you know, if a man sits too wide, it's, you know, with his legs too wide, it's toxic masculinity. You know, it, you know the idea is that this image, um, it, produ it produces a sign. Um, you know, so, so this goes to semiotics. So, again, nothing has any essence, but rather it gives off signs. And then the way that we interpret those signs, that is what meaning is. So another key, uh, core tenet is that language is constituent is constitutive. Language constructs reality, rather than language doing its best to reflect reality. Right. Um, um, for, uh, furthermore, with that, truth is provisional. 
so truth so there's no such thing as absolute truth um there's only a temporary truth we agree on what that truth might be for a time and then it will be replaced by another truth what is true now will not be true in the future um but with that you know well, who, who decides what is truth you know, from there meaning is contingent it's dependent upon something else and it sounds like everything is con is contextual um but it's not quite that what it ends up being contingent upon um is you no know, so this is this would be borrowed from marx it's di um, dialectic materialism so you measure a people or a group or, or various you know, you know, various cultures or, or, or groups by their by their by their material wealth um, and also by um, you know, their social status. So you see, you know, you view not only, not only do you view today as class warfare, but you view all of history as class warfare. And the idea is that so you know if you've got a you know if you've got a, a white a white person who seems to have more wealth than a black person, that person um, whether they realize it or not, they are an oppressor. They are oppressing the black. They are oppressing the black person. They could then argue, it's like, well, I'm not intending to. I'm not meaning that whatsoever. Well, they'd say, well, it's well, that's the system. You, know, you are part of a system, um, and they cannot escape that system. Um, you know, with with historical materialism, um, you know, you then measure things historically. So, right. if, so if black people were worse off historically, especially in America, as they were, then that means that they are oppressed now. And the white people are the oppressors now. Even if you have people, even if you have black people who are significantly better off, people like Barack Obama, who became president um, for two yeah, terms, yeah. you know, you know, he, you know, he can still be considered part part of the oppressed class, um, and the culture that's around him is would be considered the oppressors. Um, you know, and f and finally, the um, the fifth uh, recurring theme is that human nature is a myth. So that goes back to right. what you know, we have no biological essence. Um, you know, you know what we think. You know what we think we are. We can become. You know, if I if I believe that my gender is fluid and I am one of you know a hundred different genders, you know that that is correct. You know, you know that you know that is my that is my gender identity. I perform my gender in a certain way. Um, you know, gender has no has has no origin. Has no original. Um, I, I believe that's uh, that's what Judith Butler says in regard to you know, gender performativity. Um, you know, so, so all of these things, you know, you, I'm sure you've heard them all, all throughout, you know, all throughout society, all throughout our pop culture. All oh, for sure. our, um, furthermore, is that with these things, you, as I mentioned before, you know, you view everything through an oppressed, an oppressor lens. Um, so if, you know, so if gay people historically have not had, um, have not had either political representation or, um, you, know, you know, they've not had their, um, you know, they've not had their relationship status um rec you know, recognized by law um you no know, they are auto you know, they're automatically an oppressed class um those who maintained the previous status uh, status quo are the oppressor class now one of the things when it comes to cultural marxism is that you can't um you know you can't seize the means of creating culture all in one go you know you've got to go yeah. through various steps um one of the things i've identified is that you create essentially a um you, know, you, you create an equalizer a rhizomatic structure where now, so so a, a, a rhizome, for example, um, uh, an ant's nest is a rhizome. There's um, there's no one central point um, with, uh, within an ant's nest. It's uh, it, it goes everywhere. Everything connects to basically everything else. Um, nothing is nothing really seems to be more central than anything else. Um, you can apply that then to society. You know, no culture is better than any other culture. You know, all all of them are equal. So from there, you get. The existing culture, you know, cultural Marxism or critical theory, um, it's very, um, very antagonistic um, towards right. what they call you know, Eurocentric norms and ideals, um, as well as androcentric norms and ideals. So you know, those, those you know, the things that you know, things that are masculine, um, you know, you hear all, all the time about, about the patriarchy, the oppressive patriarchy, um, Darwinianism. So then you highlight the you know the people who held the status quo or the perceived status quo, um, perceived to hold the status quo. So, for example, the church um, or, or Western civilization, um, you know, or great historical figures, you point out certain flaws within them, um, and then you attack them mercilessly. You know, this is now their identity, um, right? And then from there, from there, you from there you wipe them out. Um, you know, you especially you know you knock you knock them out of the you know you knock them out of the social sphere. Um, from there, you create a um, you create a concept city over them. So you, you so you create this. Um, 
So for example, if you say that America is a racist country, the idea is that you can't actually analyze the history of the country to see how they got that claim. So, and, my, and, and the way that you pull that off also is that you destroy any means of doing so as well. That's why I was saying it, it just, it's, it's about seizing the means of creating culture. You know, you cannot argue outside the dimensions that they've set. You know, if you do so, it's either political, uh, it's politically incorrect um, or it's disinformation. It can be knocked off at once. You know, you've got an unaccountable vanguard who determine what the contingent um, categories are, who is the oppressed, who is the oppressor. You know, the TV, you know, the TV often is the one who, um, who decides what these are for us. Um, Indeed. You know, from, you know, from there, you, 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 know, you know, from there, you know, one thing after another, you can, you can knock out, you know, I mean, the arts were knocked out very, very quickly. Um, medicine is being knocked out right now. Um, you know, you know, you've, you know, you have to adhere to, um, to gender ideology. You have to adhere also to, um, you know, you've got to believe the science, which is, which is oxymoronic. You don't believe oh, science. Yes. You, yeah. you, inve you investigate. Um, you know, an, an expert. You know, an expert is someone who. No, no, they they are able to explain the specifics of their field. They're able to do it um, in a relatively simple manner, and they're able to consistently get it correct. It's not enough to say I have a qualification. You know, because right, there, are all yes. manner, there are all manner of people with qualifications who disagree. So you so you refer to primary evidence, but here when you say believe the science, it's like you can't refer to primary evidence. If you do so, you're a conspiracy theorist, you know, for even attempting such a thing. Um, you, know, you know, you know, you get labeled, you get labeled as a pariah. Um, you know, you have no, um, uh, you've got no social status in this new concept city that's been created over you. Um, you know, and you no, know, you, you know, you must always side with the oppressor, you know, with the oppressed, who is defined by the vanguard, who are not oppressed whatsoever. Um, you know, usually they fly around in private jets. Um, one, of, one of the things I've thought on, you know, they always say, you know, you've got um, you've got to diversify Western culture. You've got to get rid of, you know, the white male thinkers. Um, and one of my thoughts is that when it comes to cultural Marxism, a lot of their thinkers are white male thinkers. Indeed. So, so when they tell us, you know, we need less white representation, it's like, well, I agree. Let's let's get rid of Karl Marx. Let's get rid of Michel Foucault. Let's get rid of Jacques Derrida. You know, let's let's diversify away um, from these people. Um, one of the things, again, finally, just when it comes to cultural Marxism, yeah. is that it's so innocent. You know, of course you care. You know, you care about people's social status. You care about their health. You know, and so it's, it sounds absolutely innocent, and they usually touch upon various grains of truth. You know, you really don't want people to be worse off. They, with cultural Marxism, you get a direction as to, you know, okay, here's the problem. Here's how to solve the problem. You know, you go out, you protest, you, um, you know, you, you, you bad mouth, you know, anyone, anyone who disagrees. It produces significant direction. Um, in terms of where it came from, a lot of its ideas, you know, I, I mentioned um, Rene Descartes, but um, I'm not saying it specifically came from him. By the way, as I said, I, I don't think it was no, approved of him yeah. at all. Um, but rather, um, the Frankfurt School in Germany. Um, so you had, um, you had, you had whole whole bunch of you know, Marxists who were you know, very upset with the status quo. And and you know, there'd be elements where you know they they, they would be correct, um, but many elements where they are not correct. Um, and when they got exiled in the 1930s, um, they then came to the US, um, where their theories found a new home. Um, and from there, they you know they fostered within the education system. Um, you know. You know, lead, you know, leading to some of the ideas that have sprung forth in the 1960s. Um, and now, of course, you know, three, about three generations later, um, we are now reaping the fruits of today. Right. So, um, so yeah, no, I, I completely agree. And honestly, that's a really good analysis of cultural Marxism itself and, um, you know, how it came into an existence. And I totally agree, honestly. It's, it's, I've seen it myself of, in how it's sort of pervaded institutions and, you know, if you are, especially now with um, after COVID and everything, um, if you say one thing instead of being, you know, investigating the science, you going against the science and the science has essentially become sort of like a religion almost. Mm -hmm. um, so um, so I guess what we'll go into now is um, sort of critical theory. Um, so obviously... I guess we've sort of gone into it slightly in the sense of, you know, the in terms of cultural Marxism, they're quite critical of everything that it's, they've got to criticise things so as to sort of 
reduce their credence in society and yeah. um, so that they can replace that um, with their own ideals and ideology. Um, so um, how have those doctrines of cultural Marxism um, advanced over time and um, how has critical theory played a part in that? So I would argue that um, uh, Kevin Donnelly would be a good port of call. Um, he's got a book called um, the, uh, the Left's Long March. Um, not only that, but also there's a, um, a book called A Dictionary of Critical Theory. Um, it's published by Oxford. It's written by um, uh, Ian Buchanan. Um, you know, that goes into a lot of the real specific um, developments within critical theory. One of the things about critical theory is that it's an umbrella term. So there are all manner, so there are all manner of theories that, um, that they take in. Well, 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 in essence, it's anti-essentialist. Not everything that they've taken in is anti-essentialist. Rather, it's stuff that you know that that, that um, critiques the status quo, and some of that is not, is not necessarily a bad thing. So there can be elements of critical theory that are very very good. Um, it's right. just that there are elements that are large swaths of it that are not good. Um, you know that you know, that that remove this idea of an essence, um, and also like you get you'll get understandings as to how. So for so for example, um, uh, Roland Bart had an essay um, called uh, the death of, uh, the death of the author. Um, where he, okay, yeah. where he alleged that, um, you know, you know, there's you no know, the author does not define what truth is. You know, essentially, long live the reader. The reader is the one who decides what the truth is based on what they've read. Um, and then from there, I think I think it is um, Michel Foucault um, who had the essay "What is an Author?" Um, a few years later, um, wherein you know you've got this you've got this communication between reader and author as to what the as to what the truth might be. So in term in terms of those subtleties, there are I'd say significantly more um, significantly more capable people who have really analysed um, those things. Um, I'd also I'd also like to mention that uh, the invention of new rights also advances um, advances the goals and and and, ch and changes some of the definitions of of um, no uh, it, it, well it definitely changes some of the goals of cultural Marxism. So for example, gay marriage was not a um, it certainly wasn't a thing 60 years ago. You know, if you want, you know, if you want gay representation, you know, you know, marriage was seen as a bourgeois institution. You know, it was a, it was an oppressive thing that, you know, perhaps could be torn down, but not something for, um, for gay couples to join in on. So that's, so that's, that's, that's quite an evolution um, in, in critical theory. Um, you know, and, and that, and that wouldn't be the only thing, you know, the existence of the Anthropocene as well. Um, this, you know, this idea that you know, essentially, you know, we're, we're living in a um, in an environmental age um, beyond, you know, beyond repair. Um, you know, it, 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 I know that environmental texts are very are a very good way of hiding um, of hiding again hiding political undertones. You know, politics Indeed. is crazy, but you mark but you mask it over, you know, over the guise of climate change. Um, you know, or or, or, ver or various. Um, you know, or various you no know, you know, land rights or tree rights. I remember, I remember at my at um at Wollongong, there was some sort of there was a protest there. You had um they had they had they wrapped red banners over a tree and it said um a person like this is a person. Um, you know, it's it, it, it like it's amazing that you'll see protests like that, but you won't um you know, but the left can't recognize that there's a person in the womb. Um, Indeed, that's so that, true. Right? Yeah, but. Yeah, I, I, I'd say I say that there are, um, there are some good there are some good um, historians um, who can who can better um, elucidate that. Of course, yeah. Um, so, um, I mean, I've seen I, I um, went to uh, UTS for a small a small period of time before I decided to change over to um, online study. And I have to say, while I was there, I saw um, a few posters there for um, for Marxist protests. Um, like you know, of course. At a university, that's just how it's happened these days. I mean, it's managed to per pervade the education system quite a bit. Um, so, going into that, um, how has that cultural Marxism been able to pervade society and its institutions? Because, I mean, I know um, I forget who said it now, but um, there's a quote: uh, "The long march through the institutions." Um, so, I guess, how has that been able to pervade into the institutions we have in society to change? society in a sense i think that specific quote comes from comes from a student in the 1960s i think they were sort of um, appropriating it from it from an earlier quote um right. but it, but, it, but it, re it really brings up this idea that you know you can you can make you can make this statement 
and then three and then three generations later you can you know you can basically complete the goal um in terms in terms of how you've got to you've got to see like like you've got to seize every everywhere at once you know you, you know it's it's not enough although at the same time i would, I would say you need it you need to seize um you need to see uh, Hollywood and the news organizations first, right? Um, so, so one of the things, so one of the things when it comes to, you no, know, when it comes to the masters is that they enable a panopticon. So a panopticon, um, you no, know, it, was, it was first envisioned as a prison structure. So it's this idea you've got, um, you've got this, um, you've got this cylindrical structure where you've got all these, all these prisons, all, all, all in a single, um, you know, no, all, all arranged in a circle, and then mm-hmm. you've got this central guard tower right in the middle. And at, and at the very top, you know, you've got this, um, you know, you've got this glass that no one can see into, but anyone can see out of. So, from there, you've got one person in that central tower who can view absolutely every prisoner at once. But the prisoners have no idea whether they are being watched or not because they can't see inside. So the mere right. threat of being seen keeps people honest. Um, you know, from there, you, from there, you can apply that to many other things. You know, have you done anything on the internet? Well, Facebook knows about it. You know, there's all manner of advertisers who have seen who have seen your posts. Some, um, you know, activists can look at your your Twitter feed from ten years ago, and it's like, you know, you know, oh, look at you, you're a horrible, sexist, racist, you know, you know or, or, or whatever else. Um, you know, so it so so I I, I, mem- I remember um, I remember one person mentioned, you know, look at the gatekeepers. It's not enough right. to look at the leaders who are at the top. It's like, well, who who allowed them in there? Who got them in there? And how is it that that they that they just keep propping up? You know. Yeah. Um, so you know, no, look, look, look at the people who don't raise their voice, um, but you know, but they're sort of essential, for, you know, for letting the leaders in. Um, I think. I think also we, you know, that they, they appeal often. Again, you've got this oppressed and oppressor lens. They appeal constantly to um, to the appeals of the quote pressed and there may be genuine problems there um so you know so they're seen as you know they're seen as social heroes you know pe- people want to join those things you know people want to make a difference you know yes. if you're told yes. this, is, this is how you make a difference then you go on, you go and follow them you know you go you go and give them your vote you go and give them your money um you know it's and and, and not only that you know you no know, once it you no know, once these ideas settle in america you can then export it to everywhere in the world i mentioned um um, 1968. So Hollywood was once governed um, by a censorship code called the Hayes Code. It was written primarily by a Jesuit priest, um, Father Daniel Lord, um, and you know, it wasn't always perfect. Um, but this idea that you know you could you know, you couldn't morally um, corrupt a nation, and so there were very so in order to avoid government censorship um, to this uh, you know, you know, as a solution to this problem, they uh, they put forward their own self-censorship in america you can make you know essentially whatever film you want but if you wanted widespread distribution you had to adhere to the census of um, course. You know, I, know I know that's a topic that conservatives sort of you know, no cringe at but you know if you, you know i don't know if you've seen you no know, no lena dunham's girls or you know you know like i i studied that it's like it's it's right. it tackles all manner of sexual taboos and it tackles them absolutely full on and it's like you know you no know, this is not this is not stuff that ought to be made. You know, there, you know, there should in fact be limits. Oh, in, 19, sure. Sure. in 1968, they got rid of those limits. Um, they replaced it with yeah. the classification system, which is what we have today. Um, right. You know, films that you know are often you know, many many of the films are no longer so wholesome. They contain all manner of themes that you know parents would, would you know stay well away from. Um, furthermore, mm-hmm. with the golden age of Hollywood ended, so by changing it was no it was no longer as profitable. Um, so. Yeah, no, no, you've got to take Hollywood. You've got to take um, the news organizations. Um, so the news organizations, essentially, they they present a strategic view um, of you know, no, no, of a topic or of a problem. Um, so the tactical view is like being there on the ground. The strategic view is like looking at a map of the ground. Now, typically right. speaking, you know, if the map differs from the terrain, you trust the terrain. You trust the person on the ground. Um, but when all the news organizations are captured, they decide what the terrain is and from there you can't you can't again going back to the idea of a concept city you know you then can't analyze what it is and then even if you try and analyze it you know you don't have the language to articulate it so for example you know trump you no know, trump is a white supremacist um you know i think you no know, trump himself put out a um, 
a video that said like the 36 times he denounced white supremacy and like yeah. all, all, all in a single video. Um, yeah. And yet they, and yet they didn't air this. They didn't air, um, you know, this, this, this element from the tactical view that might be important for an audience to know about. So once, you no, know, so once you've, once you've captured the stories and you can control the future, once you've captured the news and you can control the present from there, you can change the language um, to meet the vision of that future that they've been writing. And from there, you can change it generation after generation. Um, you know, while you're trying to collect all the other institutions as well, while you're trying to you know, normalize all your ideas, um, which have been very successfully um, normalized as well. Right. Um, see, I, I, and I'll probably get um, chastised for this by fellow conservatives, but um, I think, you know, that is true that conservatives do tend to have this thing um, against cancel culture. And I mean, I've had it myself, but I think there are certain things in society that do need to be sort of, um, you know, held back because quite frankly, um, it's just insane that they're out there and um, I guess, you know, um, corrupting people's minds in some sense. Um, so well, well, it, well, I, I remember um, uh, John Paul II said um, something mm -hmm. along the lines of, you know, freedom is not the ability to do what you want, but the ability no. to do what you ought. You know, you know, the idea is that if you teach, you know, if you teach discipline to people, they can do things beyond what they can currently do. You know, if you were to say, you know, who has more freedom, you know, your average you know, six pack or, or Usain Bolt. It's like, well, Usain Bolt disciplined himself for many, exactly. many years. This man has freedom beyond our wildest dreams, essentially. Um, you know, and, and the same and the same thing applies when it comes to storytelling. You know, there are, you know, there are, it's not, it's not simply carte blanche, you know, no. you, know there, you know, there are various pressures that you put that you put on characters, that you put on language, that you put on the audience that you can't pull off if everyone's just losing their minds and going straight to 10 every time something goes wrong. It's like, that's not what the best stories do. That's so true. Um, so I guess uh, going, uh, going on from that, um, do you think that that long march to the institutions per se is nearing its completion or um, can our institutions still be saved from this ideology? Well, I, I know I said um, completion um, uh, uh, you know, a little while back, but I guess, you know, how, yeah. how, would you, how would you define completion? Um, you know, what, one, one, of my, um, one of the questions I've got is, uh, why, is it, why isn't it that we aren't building um, new institutions, more new institutions. Um, you know, that, that's one thing that I don't think many conservatives have really addressed in that, you know, if, you know, if, if an institution, you know, obviously, you know, you try and fight back within an institution, you know, it's, it's, it's ground, you know, it's, it's ground that it's ground that you've lost, oh, but sure. on, top of, on top of fighting their game, you also need to fight your own, mm. you know, you've got to play on your terms. Um, you know, Campion College, I think, was founded you know, rough, you know, roughly 20 years ago um, in um, in Western Sydney. Um, they, you know, and I, you know, they teach a Bachelor of, Liber of Liberal Arts there, so you learn theology, philosophy, um, literature, and history. Um, and I find that some of the best graduates that you can come across um, come from that institution. You know, it, you know, it obviously would have taken a lot of time um, to build that, but they have built that. Um, I remember when the um, during the abortion bill protests. Um, about uh, two, three years back, were going on. You know, I, I went to one of the weekday ones, and like half the people there were Cam were Campion College people, um, right. and they were, and, and like and they were meant to be at uni, <laughs> like like they, they were there instead. Um, you know, so in, in although in terms of this idea of near nearing completion, um, you know, I, I've I, I have seen so many friends go you know enter uni as ordinary 18 year olds yeah. and then leave as Marxists, um, especially in the arts. Um, furthermore, it's not enough to say that people have, um, you know, people have you know, changed and become Marxists, but people have become indifferent to the, um, yes. uh, either indifferent or silent, um, or, they, um, or they agree with certain tenets, not understanding where they come from. Um, and so I would say in terms of nearing completion, I, th I think I think it's a very good, I think it's a very good or very awful phrase to think about. Mm. I think it's good to think about it that way. Um, I, I'll, I'll mention though I recently because um, I, I run a um, I run a, a weekly show I co-host it 
um, with the okay. Macquarie University Liberal Club. It's called Sunday oh, yeah. Sessions. And we recently interviewed um, Andrew Stone. He was the chief economist for the Abbott government. Um, oh, yes. Yeah. A 2019 book called Restoring Hope. Um, and he proposes uh, changing hex debts so that the debt um, is jointly owned by the student and the university. Um, so the student is the one responsible for paying it back. Um, but the university, you know, after a certain grace period, um, has to contribute on the interest on any outstanding student debt. So the right. idea behind that is that, you know, you can't have, you can't be, um, you know, producing all kinds of students going through arts degrees who ultimately don't, you know, who, who don't earn certain incomes um, and then don't pay back their debt. You know, you've actually got to be, um, you know, you've actually got to be producing degrees that are, you know, that are profitable for the nation. Oh, and for so, sure. Yeah. You know, degree, so degrees, and so degrees like that, you know, degrees we've got majors in gender studies, um, you know, they, you know, they're significantly less um, enticing for a university to go for it because these people may not be earning the amount needed to pay back the debt, and now they've got to pay back the interest. Um, right. so, the, so the solution is not necessarily... Oh, it definitely needs to be ideological, but it doesn't strictly need to be fought in that realm. Um, he's got a, he's right. got a whole chapter on that um, in his book. I, I recommend uh, buy, uh, buying or borrowing it. Definitely, you know that sounds like a very interesting um, concept. To be honest, uh, I have to have a look into it a bit more. Um, so, going further into the education system, um, so I guess, do you think the education system has become sort of a major area of recruitment for um, for those who practice cultural Marxism? Well, yes, it ultimately yeah. needs it ultimately needs to be taught, um, <laughs> but but furthermore, it also needs to be hidden as well. Right. Um, you know, like I I've I used to do disability support. And so I'm looking at the, um, you know, the work of uh, these high school students, um, you know, who I'm helping out. And basically, any topic that is addressed is basically, you know, is this sexist? Is this racist? Um, you, know, for, you know, like there, there are all manner of, I would, I would say, you know, you know, there are all manner of important things that aren't being addressed. It's just a matter of, you know, do do you think the correct thing or not? Um, you know, that's right. that's basic. That's basically what they're looking for. Um, you know, you know, from there, you know, you go from there, you know, you go into, you know, you go into teaching, you go into the arts, um, you know, you become very passionate about the idea of, you know, solving oppression, um, you know, in, in a sense, you know, when talking about recruiting, it's like, in a sense, you, you almost recruit yourself. Right. Yeah. You know, um, I, I'd like to also mention that, uh, now th this is what I, I'd like, I'd like to see someone's research on this, the medical field. How hmm. how was that taken over? That was taken over. That was taken over extraordinarily. We've definitely seen it during COVID. There was an article on the, the ABC last night. Um, uh, Snow Medical Research Foundation bars University of Melbourne from funding program after six white men were the sole recipients of honorary doctorates. So I 20, saw this. Yeah, yeah, twenty four million dollars was pulled from uh, from Melbourne University. Purely, purely because of the race and gender. So, not you know, no, that their qualifications are relevant. You know, they could be Albert Einstein, you know, oh, Albert yeah. Einstein or, or Oppenheimer. You know, you know, and you and you'll you'll pull the funding. Exactly, um, it wouldn't matter either way. It's... You, you, you know, you've you've got that view of the oppressed and oppressor lens. And notice if you um you know if you've actually looked at if you've looked at the article, there's there's no um there's no counterpoint. No, you know, that, and there's no and there's no explanation of what of how of how this could be of of, of where where this thought comes from, where re, where representation um, matters to the point where if you don't represent certain groups, um, you know you are oppressing those groups. Right. Yeah. I mean, it's just uh, when I saw that last night, that was just extraordinary. Honestly, um, like you know, it's. It's just, I guess it goes to show that they don't really care too much. As you said, they don't care about your qualifications. They only care about your um, your physical features or, you know, how you identify in a sense. Um, so do you think we can change the education system to teach people, I guess, how to think rather than what to think? Because I guess some students probably don't even, in some sense, they probably don't even realise they're being indoctrinated um, until it's happened and they just, I guess, don't even really think twice about it. They um, 
they end up just spouting whatever they've been taught. Um, so can we change the education system to sort of try and combat um, critical theory in the classroom? So, well, well that's, no, that's a really good question. I'll, I'll, address, mm -hmm. the, um, I'll address the last part first. Yes, um, yeah. A key part of conservatism is that you also conserve the arguments of your opponents. So, yeah. in a, okay. so, so in a sense, critical theory won't leave won't leave the classroom because you need to understand, um, you know, that there's an error, you know, there's the error of anti-essentialism, um, okay. and that's yeah. and that's gained significant traction, and that in order for you, you know, in order for you to you know, understand, you know, more classical thinking, you need to understand, you know, the arguments it went up against, you know, point, for, yeah. you know, for example, you know, Western civilization at least historically was not Epicurean. Um, yeah. you know, but you need, but you need to under, you need to understand, um, you know, this, um, you know, the, you know, this idea of the primacy of pleasure, um, you need to understand what that is and then how to defeat, so, then how to defeat such a thing. So you, so you can, sorry, you can serve the arguments of your opponents. So in that sense, it, it won't, it won't disappear. Um, but in terms of teaching people how to think rather than what to think, um, I get, I guess, you know, how, how do you, um, so yeah, so, so, so there's there's these three literacies. So you got your primary literacy, secondary literacy, and tertiary literacy. So tertiary okay. literacy is that um, you no, know, you take in, you no, know, you understand images alone. You know, you, you know, you don't, you know, you cannot sort of you know read or write, um, or at least you no, know, or at least that's that's the main method of taking in, um, information. Um, secondary literacy is words and image, and primary literacy is words alone. So word, so primary literacy is without a doubt the best form of literacy and the most difficult form of literacy it um you know you, you know an idea is written to you and you've got to be able to conceptualize it in your head without the assistance of images um right. you know that, that, that's clearly a a more difficult thing to do and the idea is that school ideally you ought to be able to teach your average student to be able to you know you know to be able to engage in sources that way you know the best sources engage you know the best sources are essentially written ones um words yeah. and image however that's what you find, um, you know, that's what we're finding now in a, in a more, you know, leaning more towards a socialist Marxist society in that, you know, you get ideas presented, um, but it needs the assistance of images. The idea behind that is that you can't comprehend things quite as well. Um, right. and now, I'm not saying that secondary literacy is inherently bad, but this goes back to uh, my point about the news organisations before, and that you've got that, you've got that secondary literacy, secondary literate source, so, you know, your, your TV news or, or your online news. Um, but then from there, you wouldn't even have the literacy to go to a primary source. You wouldn't know how to interpret it, how to understand it. Um, you know, you don't, you don't know, it's not, you know, you don't know how to think also because you don't, you don't have the capacity to comprehend at a primary level. Right. So, okay. You know, I, I, I know, um, I think Jordan Peterson says something along the lines of, you know, there's a, there's a war against excellence. Um, yes. Yeah. You know, and you know, I, I would argue that you know, because you know, some students you know do you know, do fall behind. You know, that, that, that's a very real thing. The idea is that you then dumb down the curriculum so that more people can pass. But the idea, you know, the idea behind an education is that it's in service to the public. You know, right. you, you know, by by, lear by learning all of these things, you can then go out into the public world into whatever. Area, you know, you know, whether it's medicine, whether it's science, whether it's the arts, whether it's you know, in history, um, you know, and you're able to comprehend things, you know, extremely well, and you're able to pass things on to the next generation. When you dumb everything down and make it so that everyone can pass, you know, you no longer, you can't essentially do that charitable act. Um, right. They, you know, you know, I, I, you know, IQ levels go down, so it's not just that. Um, it's not just that we can't innovate at the same rate that we um, used to be able to, but we can't even maintain the innovations that we've made. Um, you know, there's a guy on YouTube, um, uh, Dr. Edward Dutton. Um, he's got a book called At Our Wits End. Um, okay. you know, he, he identifies that this is this is something that's already occurred in that um, right. international flight used to be significantly faster um, 40, 50 years ago than it is today. Um, but, con uh, but the idea was that we, we became too stupid to maintain um to maintain concord and so concord went under and so now we can make we can maintain less um you know le less less quick it may be more luxurious perhaps or, or, or depending on where you sit um 
but you know, you know we we maintain less less capable systems. Um, yeah. And again, you know, you're talking about generation after generation across every single field. You know, we are you know we're unable to pass on what was previously comprehended, and so you know we're you know it's it becomes open season for conservatives. Oh, for sure. I mean, I I've, I've actually seen that point made before about you know how we um we should how you know it's good to have the uh, opposing views still available for people to see in the classroom as well, so that they can sort of I guess um I guess in some sense come to an informed view of um, what might be good and what might not be good. And um, I think um, like I was reading recently uh, Michael Knowles' book Speechless. Um, and he mentions that as well. Um, I only just remembered that now, but he does go into that sort of um, topic a bit as well in his book, um, it, which well, I highly recommend. <laughs> yeah, well, it's it's necessary because the yeah. idea about debating is that you're debating you're debating the essence of something. You don't know what is its yes. essence. Yes. Yeah. Um, and so you and so you absolutely need those counterpoints, but you need them to go up against. You need to go up. You need it to go up against something that isn't straw manned. For you sure, know, you know, yeah. oh, you know, you, you know that you know, the church just hates gay people. Um, you know, the church, you know, the church just hates women. It's like, it's like that. That's a total straw man. You know, you, you, know, you can refer to the catechism of the Catholic Church um, in regard to you, 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 know, you know, gay people are still, you know, they're still children of God. You know, yes, they're, they're yes, still exactly. Be respected. You can refer back to um, the dogmatic constitution of the Catholic Church, where it mentions you know, men and women are co-equal. You know, you know. So, so again, you know, you've got, you've got. Uh, either you've got primary sources, you've got secondary, you have that secondary source in the catechism that, you know, that absolutely blow apart their arguments. Oh, but for they're, sure. not, they're not even presented. No, no. And that's the problem that we have, I think. Um, so I guess, are there any institutions that have not succumbed to these doctrines of cultural Marxism yet? Or So, yeah, so yeah. I, I've mentioned um, Campion College before. And I, I, I believe you only you need an ATAR of um, 75 to get in. Um, right. Not only okay. that, I think they've got um, there are various paths. I think there are uh, essentially no, no. Go and have a phone call with them. Um, I actually I want to oh, find sure. yeah. without going there. Um, you know, furthermore, they offer a like they offer a diploma, um, in liberal arts as well. So the idea is that you can do a diploma for one year, um, and then if you like it, you can then just continue to do the bachelor's for another two for another two more years, um, or you can just leave leave um, the diploma. Um, so it's very um, it's very flexible. I highly recommend um, Notre Dame. Um, yes. At least, at least in terms of um, the theology and philosophy department. Um, okay. You know, I'm, I'm, you know, I, I'm not I'm not in the other fields, but um, you know, like Cardinal George Pell mentioned in his, um, I believe he mentioned in his prison diaries that yes, um, that Notre Dame's philosophy department is the best is the best in the country. Yes, I did remember. I do remember recall him saying that. Yeah. Yeah, so you, you know, and 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 I've taken I've taken some sub, some subjects in that, and it's like it's it's actually beyond belief. So you know, honestly, you know, I reckon sign up, even just take a single subject if yeah. you just want to take it slow. You know, you know, just like it's it's it really is beyond belief. It's it's astonishing what's there. And again, and they engage with the right. you know, with the more contemporary arguments. They really you know they engage with them. But again, it's it's a matter of it's a matter of essences. It's like it it can't it can't hold. Right. Yeah. Oh, of course. And that's a good. That's honestly. That's what we need more of. We need that engagement in uh, mm. in the classroom, in particular in education, um, so that people can sort of, I guess, um, get a good understanding of both sides of the argument. Um, so, how can we combat cultural Marxism in modern society? So I've, I've mentioned before uh, the strategic view. The idea, you know, if you see, if you're trying to seize the means of producing culture. Um, you've you've got to you've got to seize um, you've got to seize that strategic view. The idea that you know anything that's on the tactical plane gets filtered through the strategic plane. So if it comes across that block, then you know they essentially decide what the truth on the ground is. They decide it all for you. Um, I know we've you know we've definitely seen that in this um, in this Ukraine Russia war. Um, yes. You know, you know all, all all manner of things on the ground that ended up not being true. It's like you've got that quote. Um, uh, you know the first casual. The first casualty in war is the truth. Yes. Like, well, well, why? Well, the, you know, the strategic plane is um, is relaying incorrect information from the tactical plane. So I, I I wonder. So I mentioned before, you know, we need to be building our own institutions, our own film companies. Um, you know, we also need to be founding our own news organisations. 
um, yeah. and making them essentially as bold as possible. Um, in the UK, GB News, um, you know, I think within four days of being live um, was more watched than I think two other news organisations combined. Wow. So, like, like, there is a market out there. People are wanting this. Um, so I actually wonder, you know, what, what, do, what does it take to get a broadcasting license? Um, yes, you, know, yeah. all, you know, there are all manner of topics that, that are desperate to be explored, desperate to be explained, um, that simply aren't because, you know, the strategic view for the most part, except perhaps for Sky News, um, has been, has been captured. Um, yeah. I would say, I would say the same thing in, in regards to, you know, you know, making film companies, you know, besides perhaps the new one by, um, by Ben Shapiro. No, yeah. can you, no, yeah. no, can you name me? I don't want to say a conservative um, film company, but like, like, can you name me that one that's more, more engages with more classical storytelling? No. Or more, no. Moral, moral virtues or values? Can you name me one? No. Honestly, that's the only one I can think of at this point yeah, with the, yeah, that yeah. Ben Shapiro's come up with. Honestly, it's a, and it's good that he did because it's covering a market that is obviously wanting, you know? People want to see that type of... Um, of media in a sense well although you can see it like one one example in yeah. one major example in all of western civilization isn't that extraordinary it's just, so it's just so, incredible it's, yeah so it, it's yeah. what i mentioned before in that in that you know yes you know you need to you know you, you know you need to fight fight the left's game but you also yeah. need to be on your own you know you also need to yeah. you know you know you also need to found your own ground Know, start a new start again um you know fa failing is a um like you know, no, no I, did, I did creative arts you know yeah if you don't, if you don't fail you don't enter you know yes. if, you, if you don't if you don't fail in your singing practices you can't be a singer of any great renown um because you're you know you're essentially using you're using you no know, fragile you know, fragile muscles you know exactly they, they need to be strengthened they need to be honed they need to be tempered um you know the same thing with dancing as well um, I like giving, I like thinking on the example of, um, in the Bible of, uh, Mark four, the parable of the sower, um, know. and that, you know, you know, Christ mentions about, you know, the seed that falls on thorns, uh, you know, you've got the deceitfulness of wealth and the worries of this life and the cares for other things, you know, it chokes the word and makes it unfruitful. And I thought, you no, know, well, you no, know, he mentions, you know, the harvest that falls on good ground is heard, you no know, produces a harvest 30, 60, a hundred times. And I thought, well, what's the secret to that? And at least in the NIV translation, I found that the secret was in the very first word of Mark 4. Again, again, Jesus went by the lake to preach. God himself had to go again, 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 like a singer. Exactly. Like a dancer. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. How, like how, how are you going to do anything unless you, you know, fail publicly, fail badly. I'm not saying God didn't fail. Uh, I'm just saying no, that. No, 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 of course. Yeah, no. you know, how, how else are you going to do it? I think that's something that needs to be rediscovered. There's, a, um, there's an essay called Beauty in the West by, um, by James Matthew Wilson. Uh, it's in okay. the book uh, Liberal Shock, The Conservative Comeback. And he argues that one of the weaknesses of conservatism is that we fail to remember what we're trying to conserve. Um, that's very and, true. Mm. And, and I've, I've learned that, you know, in the, in the Bible, remember doesn't simply mean calling to mind. It means renewing your membership. Mm. So that's a renewing is not merely a mental experience. It's a full body experience. You know, when we're told to remember the Anzacs, it's not solely call it to mind. It's that, you know, we've got to re we've got to re-embody, um, you know, a lot of the things they, they fought and died for. And when we oh, fail yeah. to re-embody it, then why, you know, then we would have less, instinct less will to call it to mind that's so true honestly and that's i mean especially now um you know after the last two years and everything and i guess people have really undervalued their freedoms um that you know our ancestors all really put their um, hearts and souls into fighting and um you know they gave their lives for that and we really need to be re-embodying what they fought for because quite frankly um it's shocking how quickly society has, um, I guess, succumbed to um, overreach, government overreach and, you know, uh, power grabs. Um, I, I would say when it comes to China's belligerence or uh, the Great Reset, um, yeah. you, know, there are, you know, there are multiple entities or conspiracies that, you know, again, they've got primary sources stating their intentions. 
Exactly. Um, I would say that if we will remember one way or another. I think yes. we're, you know, we're, we're getting to that tipping point. Either we will remember it ourselves and fight back, or we will remember when it's gone. Indeed. Indeed. Um, so I guess, um, and I, I was going to actually say um, with, um, I guess this is quite important now, you know, with um, Russia and Ukraine and everything, you know, there's so much um, propaganda and sort of that information coming out that people don't, people are sort of struggling to tell what's real and what's not. Um, and so I guess uh, when it comes to fighting the culture wars per se, um, what are your thoughts on the culture wars? And I guess should we be focused on one part of, um, on fighting one part of cultural Marxism at a time or uh, should we combat all its doctrines at once? So at its core, again, it's anti-essentialist. Things don't have yeah. any essence. I would, say fo I would say focus on your own area of study first because, mm -hmm. you, you know, you, you, won't, you won't be the only person doing this. You know, it's like it sounds. It sounds like I'm saying stay in your lane, but Jordan Peterson stuck to his field of psychology, yes. and yeah. the idea is that it has many, many overlaps within the arts. So essentially, in sticking to in sticking to his his area of study, he also covered a whole bunch of others. Yes, um, that's very true. So, you know, so so when the so when the left came from uh, came for him, um, and he stood his ground. And he, you know, he became rock star famous. He's been changing people's lives, you know, oh, all, sure. you know, all, you know all, all over the planet. And he can do so in a few minutes. You know, he honed himself. He disciplined himself. Again, going back to the idea of freedom is the ability to do what you ought. You know, he disciplined yes. himself. I think he said like from since 1985 or, so, or something like that, since he was 25. Yeah. Um, you know, he's disciplined himself in such a way that he has freedom beyond his wildest dreams in Canada. Under Justin I know. <laughs> of all places, <laughs> you, you know. So you know. So in terms of fighting cultural Marxism, you know, he uh, he goes into the idea of, of pan, you know, the the wide or all. Um, you know, children yeah. are, are all potential. They're all pan essentially. Um, Peter Pan is the boy who didn't want to grow up. He didn't want mm. to lose his his allness. Um, but you no, know, he argues that you know you've got to you know you need to specialize in you know, something. Um, you know, when you become an adult, but as you continue to go into that specialization, such as in my example of Usain Bolt, um, yes. you regain your pan in a sense, you regain your all, you get your specialization, plus you get so much more. So, so I would say we, we do need to focus on your own area of study. Um, right. I'm not saying that you can't be concerned about the other ones. No, um, of course, yeah. You know, people like Lila Rose, you know, she'd be concerned about all manner of things, but her, but her primary focus um, is on you know, is on you know, pre you know, pre preborn rights, mm, um, yeah. and if she did not have that specialization, I, th I think what, what she got to start by um, she was UC a UCLA student. And she was um, I think she was, I she think so, yeah. uh, she she put forward a, a, an appointment to go for an abortion. She was like she had a secret camera and things like that. Um, you know, if she hadn't had had that specialization. Um, Quite frankly, the pro-life movement would be very different. That's just one person. Oh, that's definitely true. Yeah, one person. exactly. You won't be the only person specialising. No, no. And it's amazing how one person can really uh, make, I guess, a quite a big difference um, and sort of shape a movement in a sense like that. And, I mean, her work has been fantastic in that industry mm -hmm. and um, in that area especially. And I know, you know, there's a few others I've seen in that area that have done really well. And if people do sort of focus on their own areas, as you say, they do quite well in being able to um, fight for that particular part. And once everyone's, once they all sort of, I guess, um, if you've got people fighting this on, um, on many fronts, in a sense, um, then it's, I guess, you're covering a lot more bases um, rather than just, um, you know, focusing yourself on all the areas and being overwhelmed by it in some sense. Yeah. Um, you, you, you do, like, you do need people. I, I'm not saying it will necessarily be any of us, but you do need people to no. work through the minefield. Um, yes. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> you know, you know, if you've got one person with courage, you know, it's, it stiffens the spines of the others around him. Um, oh, for sure. You know, one, you know, one Jordan Peterson had courage from the spine of everyone else. Um, I was listening to a talk by uh, Martin Niles, 
um, the head of the oh, yes. Australian the director of the Australian Christian Lobby, um, who mentioned that the original pro-life movement after the uh, Roe v. Wade uh, ruling in the States, the original pro-life movement totaled 30 people. Wow. So such a landmark decision had... Oh, sorry, there's something in the background. Right. No, no, right. um, such a landmark decision total 30 yeah. people who, who, who were concerned. But now it's one of the largest human rights um, oh, yeah. movements of, of our time. So... You know, no, no, don't don't be don't be afraid to be that trendsetter. You know, if you yeah. see a need, you don't see anyone sort of following. You know, you know, if, you, if you don't see anyone pursuing it, maybe it's for you to pursue. I was reading. I was reading about also um a man who um who was investigating uh, Joseph McCarthy's um you know sort of uh, um, investigation to uh, you know the un-American activities, you know the communists in the 1950s, and one of the, and the conclusion that he came to was that. Um, not only was Joseph McCarthy right, he was more right than he thought he was. And, you know, you need only look at um, the list. Um, if you look at, like, McCarthyism on Wikipedia, you'll find um, you'll find among the lists, you know, the list of victims, um, Berthold right. Brecht and um, uh, uh, Hans Einsler. It's like, well, Berthold Brecht is not merely a Marxist playwright. He is the Marxist playwright. He is an utterly prolific, um, very talented person I thought I might actually read a poem just to give you an idea yeah, of just, how, just how Marxist this man was. For um, sure, go ahead. Yeah. It's called The Solution. After the uprising of the 17th June, the Secretary of the Writers' Union had leaflets distributed in the Stalin, in the Stalin elite, mm. stating that the people had forfeited the confidence of the government and could, only win it, and could win it back only by redoubled efforts. Would it not be easier in that case for the government to dissolve the people and elect another. Wow. Now, now I've, I've read that, you no, know, this is a, it's meant to be a satirical poem. In terms of the yeah. exact context, I don't have it. But this idea of dissolve the people and elect another, it's like, well, we're, de we're definitely seeing that throughout, throughout Western civilization. That's so true, honestly. And, um, and just going back to what you said before, you know, that, um, having the courage to stand up, you know, I think a lot more people need to do that. Cause I mean, I know there's probably a lot of people out there. I mean, even like myself, like, you know, I was thinking about doing this sort of thing for years before I even started actually getting involved in it. And, um, and I think if you have the courage to step up, it does encourage others. And I mean, you know, going back to the pro-life movement, that 30 has now become like millions in a sense. It's like, mm -hmm. I saw the um, March for life just this year and, just seeing the image, the pictures coming out of there and the footage of all the people marching, it was just incredible um, just to see the crowds there. So I guess that inspires others to sort of get involved with that um, with that movement and get involved and speak up themselves. Um, so I guess going from that note, um, if more people stand up and everything, can we defeat um, cultural Marxism um, and sort of restore... Uh, the culture, the strong culture of Western civilization. So, so restoring the culture will require a primary literacy. So, okay. if you're going to if you're going to stand up, you're going to have to be like you're going to be sacrificing absurd amounts of time. Um, in a sense, uh, you know so your social status as well. You know, I'm sure there are many people from the Spectator who have um, who have copped all manner of um, all manner of abuses. Just be, able to, to be able to, like, yeah, just be able to articulate the fruits of the primary sources that they've researched, you know, um, you know, in, in terms of in terms of defeating in terms of defeating this. Um, I don't know if you're familiar with um, uh, the fox and the grapes in Aesop's Fables. Uh, the fox come across comes across a grapevine hanging from a tree. It's got these juicy grapes. He jumps up to try and eat it, but he can't quite get it. He jumps up again and again, and he can't get it. And then he says, and then he says to himself, "Ah, it appears to me these grapes are sour." Um, and it says he walked away sul uh, sulkily. And the and the moral of the story: there are many who pretend to despise and belittle that which is beyond their reach. So, yes. in terms of yeah. you defeat this ideology, it's like not without discipline, not without yeah. that primary literacy. It's not enough. It's not enough to simply stand up. Standing up is fantastic in terms of stiffening the spines of other people. Fa fantastic, but in terms of you know, are you going to restore the foundation? It's like, well, the people who laid it were unbelievably intelligent, um, mm. you know, and they and they made a lot of sacrifices. Um, you, know, at, you know, at the moment, you know, we have an opposition who are playing to win. 
Oh, for sure. No, I, I, I get very, um, no, maybe this will be unpopular, but I get very critical of, um, so that there's a large chunk of conservative culture um, that's sort of dedicated to, you know, dedicated solely to laughing um, at some of the absurd and weird and wacky ideas um, that are coming out from the left. It's like, well, guess what? They're winning. Why? That's are you, it. You know, yeah. and, 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 and often, and often it's the, um, it's the weak, the impressionable, the children who fall victim um, to, to the things that they're doing. It's like, you know, what, why are we, why are we laughing at them? We're, we're laughing ourselves into hell. You know, you know, if you're, if you're racing against Usain Bolt, it's like, you know, maybe you'll, you'll find some aspect of him to laugh at, but he's beating you. Exactly. You know, he's beating you. I've even seen, I'll just say quickly, I've even seen some conservatives, um, even just yesterday, um, Matt Schlapp, who's the, um, the head of CPAC over in the US, he um, tweeted yesterday about um, the transgender swimmer, um, Leah Thomas, who's now swimming in women's races. Um, and he was saying that, uh, you know, her story is quite... Um, remarkable in some sense like he was you know he was sort of I guess giving ground to um to that ideology in a sense and I guess when you give ground it gives them the signal that they can try and take more and um so I guess you know I just I just wanted to sort of put that in there in some sense um like we can't really give them much ground otherwise they will continue to progress no, so, no, so, so in, in, term, in, terms of, in terms of giving them ground, we often don't give them um, some strong alternatives for them to think about. So like I've stood at, um, mm. I've stood at life choice talks. You know, you can't, you can't just, you know, you can't just you know, put up your wall and say, you know, you know th this is what I believe. In. And if you, don't, if you don't agree, you know, you're wrong. Um, you know, you've got to really, you've got to really, you know, like people, people, you know, and Frank is right. You know, people are still inherently good. You know, yeah, even, yeah. even even if their even if their methods are wrong, and their ends are wrong, they are still seeking a good. Like like that like that, that that's a basic of, mo of moral theology. Um, so, you know, when it comes to engaging with these people, it's like, well, what good are they are they actually seeking? You know, right. I've, you know, and I've engaged with people who have been you know absolutely full on with you know I you know, they supporting you know abortion rights, and then you sort of you know you know you slow you, know, you slowly put forward new ideas that they haven't considered. And they will like they will literally change in front of you. Okay. They will literally yeah. change in front of you. Um, you know, conser you know, conservatives need to they need to play that long game. They need to fail in play playing that long game. Yeah. Um, you know, because because how else are you going to learn? Um, That's right. That's right. I mean, we do learn from our failures, um, mm -hmm. and we learn from our mistakes. So, I definitely agree with that. Um, and I guess I'd say as well. I mean, now that you know, there's that sort of um, conflict in um, between Russia and Ukraine, and you know the West is sort of getting involved in trying to help um, Ukraine and preserve Ukraine against Russia. Um, I guess the question I think people have is: Can the West really get involved in um, wars at the moment when our culture is so uh, when we're really fighting to preserve our own culture rather than and try and keep that intact hmm. so that we can manage to actually be strong. And um, I guess we'd need a strong Western civilization in order to be able to fight a war like that. Yes. Yeah, so, so um, like I, I'm hoping, I'm hoping to write about this um, soon. Like I've, I've, I've yes. had yeah. publications uh, well, recently in the spectator, um, but also on Politicom as well. Um, you know, personal integrity is national security. Mm. Yeah. You know, you know, Trump. You know, Trump. You know, you know, for all, you know, for all his faults, you know, had you know, brought brought with him a team that um that had integrity to the point where Putin was not even going to attempt um you know a sec a second a second bite at um exactly at um you know it's it, it's you know it's obvious also it, like you know because because we are throwing away that things have an essence we're also throwing away that there could be a right or wrong way of doing things. You know, yes. so we're essentially equating wisdom and folly. You know, wis wisdom is wisdom always has a practical element to it. It's not solely that you know you think you know you think something that's nice. It's no you 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 act in such a way that it's nice. So sorry, you, you act in such a way 
um, that I guess it's flourishing either to yourself or to others. Right. Um, you know, I, I take um, uh, Roger Scruton's definition of philosophy. That's the study of everyday life. So yeah. it's more than just, you know, you know, what do things mean? It's like, okay, now that you have the meaning, how does one behave? How does one act? How does one, a, a sense, you know, how does one remember you know, yeah. who, you know, who they are called to be? Um, you know, and that's, quite frankly, that's a far more scary thing, you know, <laughs> changing your life. Um, you know, at, at, the, at the same time, you know, if you don't, you know, well, our national security is, you know, sort of, you know it's, it's, gone, it's gone down the drain. Um, because we don't, we don't, we don't uphold our, our personal integrity. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, I guess, um, so I guess you'd agree that, you know, we have to have a strong West in order to be able to survive in some sense, um, when it comes to conflict and, um, you know, just, I guess, um, I guess we have to sort of challenge our, um, our minds and, you know, our sense of self in some sense and be able to, um, you know, work on ourselves and make sure, I guess, like what Jordan Peterson says, you know, um, one of his rules in his, um, in 12 rules for life, um, I'm probably paraphrasing here, but, um, you know, um, get your own house in order before you go criticizing the world. Um, you know, we need to be able to have that self strength in some sense before we can go and make a difference in some degree. Hmm. No, I, totally, yeah. I totally agree because it, it, it's yeah. it's what's most within um it's what's most within your power yeah yeah for sure well um that's i think that'll be time to be honest so um thank you for joining me today andrew it's been, it's been really great conversation honestly i think people will get a lot out of it and people will be able to understand um cultural marxism and um how it sh shapes society and how we can sort of combat it um a lot more so Thank you for joining me today and um, I really appreciate it. No, thank you, Joel. Thank you for having me.